my name is Kent Philpott, and this is a four-part series that we title Homosexuality from a Christian Perspective. Mentioned at the very outset that Christians have varying views on homosexuality. Uh, our view, mine and my guest Charlene Hyos, is that homosexuality is sinful behavior. And many Christians hold to that, but we understand that there is a continuum. You have the very liberal who would describe homosexuality as normal and moral. We're going to be talking with Charlene about that. And then there are those who say uh, that homosexuality is, well, you're automatically condemned to the nether regions uh, if, uh, if such should be the case. And so we are sort of in the middle, maybe a little bit to the left of, I mean, right of center, not left of center, right of center. We have, as we talked about in our second program, that we are people of the book. That means the Bible. Mm -hmm. And we discussed uh, the biblical view. And that the Bible comes very clearly uh, to the point that homosexual behavior is sinful behavior. Mm -hmm. When people say, well... What does the Bible say about homosexuality? I like to say, I don't know about you, Charlene, I like to say, read Genesis chapters 1 and 2, read Romans chapter 1, mm -hmm. and make up your own mind. Uh, it's, not, it's not difficult to understand. Uh, but today, now, this, this last program, we're going to talk about contemporary issues. Uh, those things in the media, things that we get from our culture uh, that, uh, that deal with homosexuality. Um, Charlene, let me ask you a couple questions to get this started. Okay. Do you, as someone who has come out of the homosexual lifestyle, do you believe that homosexuality or think homosexuality is normal? Do I or is it not normal? I don't believe that it's what was intended. It's definitely not a normal thing. God created man and God created woman. And the two fit, just like the scripture says in Genesis. The two fit. So the answer to the question is no, I don't believe that it's a normal. So it, it, then it's in your view, and I share that view, that it is not normal, it's not a part of the original intent. Mm -hmm. How did we get there? How did, how did we get with such a high percentage of, of uh, the population uh, have a homosexual identity? How did we get there? Well, I, want, I needed to, cor may I correct you on the, sure. there's not a high percentage. Uh, many people out there would like to say it's about 10% from the Kinsey reports. But really, when you look at some, some research that has been done, it's really about 2 to 3% of the population that identifies themselves. But the media, the media makes it seem like it's rampant. Most definitely. Yeah. I'm not certain why they do that. But as for the, the answer to your question is, why is all of this? It's, it, a biblical answer is the fall. Okay, the biblical answer to the fall. Now, explain the fall, because people might not know. Right, the fall is, you, know, you had Adam and Eve in the garden, and Adam and Eve both partook of the fruit that they weren't supposed to partake of. And it was from that moment they were disobedient to God. Okay, and their, homos their, their, their sexuality was affected. We know that all of a sudden, they, they, we know that they were naked. Right. Now they realized they were naked, and they felt guilt, and they mm -hmm. were ashamed. And so human sexuality was radically and dramatically I impacted. It was. And, uh, and so you're, you're saying that homosexual behavior fits into that, the, uh, the, the change, the shift, the twistedness, the, the brokenness of human sexuality. Mm -hmm manifests itself in all kinds of ways. Right. Whatever. Homosexual behavior being one of them. Just, yeah, homosexuality is just one of them. You know, in, in Romans 1, the scripture we read in the second 
part of his program, I believe. You know, that was God kind of turning people over to their choices. In other words, God gave, said, okay, I don't want you to go this way. Mm -hmm. I'm going to let you go this way. Mm -hmm. But there's a high price to pay. Right. This is not, you know, this may seem okay to you, and you may justify it, because there is a sex, there is a satisfaction, there is a sexual, there is a sexual high mm -hmm. that people will experience, and it gets reinforced as you go along. It does. Uh, and and so it leads people to think that this is a normal expression. Uh, is there is there satisfaction in gay sex? Is there satisfaction? Maybe I maybe let me let me rephrase that. Please. Is is it possible that any sexuality will lead to satisfaction and 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 contentment? You talking about physical satisfaction? Yeah. Oh yes. To some degree. To some degree, most definitely. Okay. Um, we have we have uh, the idea that in in the Romans chapter, in Romans chapter one, uh, that it almost becomes when you give into your lust, it becomes addictive. Almost definitely, it, it it almost takes over. It takes over. Now this would be this would be true for homosexuality. Uh, it would be true for sinful expressions of heterosexuality. Mm -hmm. One of the things that I'm trying to get to is, I think that we've placed way too much emphasis on sexuality. And I, when I think of homosexuality, I think, man, that's put right up at the top of the pyramid. Like, this is, this is where we're all supposed to go. We're supposed to find satisfaction and contentment through our sexuality. I think that's a misuse of our sexuality. <coughs> I don't think it was intended to be the end all. But in, in homosexuality, it, a lot of times to me, seems to be the focus. The sexuality seems to be the focus. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, one of, the, one of the things I like to say is, you know, with homosexuality being the focus, not really going along with what you're saying, but with homosexuality being the focus of Christians is that homosexuality is but one branch on the entire tree of sin. Yes. You know, and for some reason we just, we're, we, we focus on that one itself. Yeah. Our, I think our culture will lead us to believe that um, our, our sexual identity is the chief and paramount goal of our life. To th This is where you're going to find your happiness, your satisfaction, and this is how products are sold. So much is generated around the idea of sexuality. <coughs> it may be one of the reasons why, uh, as, as a culture, we're dissatisfied sexually, because we've misused it. Sexuality is to be a part of our life, Mm -hmm. uh, only a part, but when we make it this great big deal, we're, we're doomed to frustration because it will not satisfy. It just cannot. Mm -hmm. It's not intended by the Creator to satisfy. We remember that our Christianity is a life lived in relationship with our Lord Jesus. Mm -hmm. And our satisfaction, our contentment, the peacefulness of our lives, I believe, comes out of and in the context of that relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's where you, we were right on the same thought there because that's what my thinking was. The entire time that I was involved in the homosexual life, I was always missing something. There was something that I was looking for. You know, I said earlier that I'd look for, I'd go uh, for alcohol, more sex, different kinds of homosexual sex, but I never found what I was looking for. You know, Kent, I didn't find like what I was looking for until I accepted Jesus Christ into my life. From the moment I accepted him, I have had such a peace. And, you know, I've never, never been with a man sexually, you know, just, just, with, just with women. So I don't know what the feeling is, you know, with, with a man. Um, but I do know that for me, the, the, the peace that I have through living my life for Christ, for Jesus Christ, is just, I, I think that's the, you know, the ultimate. So, back to that, that, that issue of, 
you know, is homosexuality normal? And then, of course, the next thing flows from that is, is homosexual behavior immoral? Now, I have a magazine article, and of course, uh, the, the Joint Chiefs Chairman General Peter Pace, some time back, he said in an interview with the Chicago Tribune, quote, I believe homosexual acts between two individuals are immoral. And, of course, that created a real firestorm. Most definitely <coughs> did. He, General Pace made it clear that uh, this was not military policy that he was expounding, but it was his own personal view. It was his own personal view point. Which he, which he is, I would imagine, free to say. I, I think that it's subsided. But would you agree with General Pace in saying that homosexual behavior is immoral? I do agree with him, I, but what I need to also agree with is the fact that he, it was his opinion and he does have the right to say it because, you know, every day on TV and, and you know, not to pick on anybody, but, you know, there's a show on a, on, a, on a TV station with Rosie O'Donnell in it and every day she is pushing her personal agenda in the fact, in the fact that she's gay. You know, and, but she got mad at this article. Yes. She got mad because he came out and kind of called the kettle black. That, that I thought was quite an interesting, the fact that she got mad. She's up there every day on television and she's saying. Pushing the gay life. Pushing the gay life. It's all wonderful, normal, and moral. Right. And, you know, that to me always displays a weakness uh, when, when we are, uh, when we're, so easily tweaked, when we're so easily um, moved into an attack mode, a defensive mm -hmm. position, it seems a weakness there uh, that, uh, you know, and, and, and it's as though if someone happens to mention stuff like a general pace, why, hell, hell follows. Yes, most definitely. Uh, you know, it's sort of like the old cultic behavior. Some cults, uh, anytime anybody would attack them, they would sick their lawyers on them. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so, and, and that the, long been identified as a um, uh, a means that cults use to defend themselves. And some of the larger cults, they still do this. If you put them in a bad light, uh, oh. they will come at you tooth and nail. Yes. Uh, to defend their honor, uh, so called, jump up and down, scream and yell, protest, murder people. I've always felt that that is very weak. Uh, that is actually an, in, in, uh, uh, an indicator that uh, their position is not sound, that there's something else here. We know that we are always going to defend our sin. The Bible even says we will approve of people who defend our sin. Mm -hmm. We're constantly in the process of normalizing and approving and supporting our sinful behavior. Mm -hmm. In fact, we'd like to legislate it. Yes. That's going to bring up another issue here. We're going to talk about civil rights. But, uh, but, and you can see where the homosexual agenda uh, would be very disturbed by Christians like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And there's not very many voices in our culture any longer right. not. Uh, that are able to stand up and say, this is not normal, this is not moral. The schools can't. The courts basically can't. We're having a struggle with that. Uh, legislators, states, le legislature, our own Congress. See, we're faced with this, that we are unable to stand up and say what's normal and moral because of the rapid and powerful attack mm -hmm. of, of the, gay, the gay lobbies and, uh, and so on, that I think that so much of our culture feels intimidated. Uh, you're made to feel like, well, you're homophobic. Mm -hmm. You're a complete nincompoop, obviously. You're a hater. You're not tolerant. You don't, you don't embrace uh, di uh, diversity. And you're actually doing damage because you're confusing and conflicting mm -hmm. these poor people. Well, do you know when, uh, when we were advertising for Homosexuals Anonymous to get the word out there that that was going on, I actually had somebody call me up, and they... They asked me, they said, you know, we, we were wondering if this was a joke. The homosexual population feels so comfortable that they are thinking that... Have been accepted. That they've been accepted, that, 
you know, the society has accepted them that they think that my reaching out, our reaching out to help those who struggle with their same sex, same sex attractions, that it's a joke. That just broke my heart. Yeah. You know, it was a, that just sh shows us how much, at least this area, not necessarily the entire United States, but at least this area has, you know, they no longer have a problem or seemingly don't have a problem with the homosexual population. It's almost like lost our ability to blush or to have shame mm -hmm. or to be embarrassed or even with the capacity to, to question particular behavior. Mm -hmm. um, we've lost that. I, I, we, we have a weakness of standing against. We, we are far more comfortable in moving along in the general direction that our culture takes us we have such a desire to fit in. It's hard. It's hard for me. It's been hard for me all of these years to to be someone who is saying, "No, that's not right." Mm -hmm. uh, and of course, now you're Charlene facing the same thing in your ministry and your work, uh, because in our particular area, the San Francisco Bay Area, um, you know, people are seemingly are unable to say, "No, I, I." I don't, I don't think that homosexuality is normal. I don't believe that homosexual behavior is moral. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and so it, it, it's a difficulty. But as Christians, we are called to a couple of things. We are called to be salt. Mm -hmm. We are called to be light. We are called to proclaim the wonderful works of God in Christ. This is our calling. And so this is what we do. We, our, our interest is not in, in pointing out people to hate. But, but our culture, you know, in terms of civil rights now. Oh, in yes, terms let's, of the get, civil let's rights, get back to that one. Uh, it's become almost a civil rights issue. Uh, they, people are, some places, and people will have the opinion that to say homosexuality is not normal is a hate crime. To say that homosexual behavior is immoral is tantamount to a hate crime. We've come to that, mm -hmm. that point of view. Now let's consider the, the civil rights issues. All right, well, you know, I was on uh, recently on a gay radio station in, in San Francisco, and after they finished interviewing me, their resident, she, and she calls herself this, their resident lesbian, uh, came on and and she said, you know, I don't think that Charlene ever was really gay. She couldn't, she couldn't recognize the fact that, you know, she didn't want to recognize the fact that I had come out of homosexuality. She didn't want to recognize that. And this is all going to civil, this is all going into the civil rights things. Um, Ex-gay ministries are actually under fire because what's happening is if, if the ex-gay ministries continue to grow and continue to help people come out of their homosexuality and continue to, people continue to change, then the gay agenda is going to lose the civil rights battle because the civil rights battle is based on the fact that homosexuals should have these specific rights because they're born gay. But if I was born gay, then I never could have changed. I mean, I couldn't you know, I was born Caucasian. There's no way I could change my skin color because this is the, well, there is scientifically, of course, but, you know, there's no way I could just do No it. natural process. No natural process. Thank you. So, so it, I see what you're saying, Charlene. So if, if people are not born gay, that undercuts, that undercuts the, the civil rights issue mm -hmm. as far as homo uh, homosexual rights such as marriage, marriage adoption, adoption and, and so on, that, that, is, that is then cast into another light. Yeah, it's if we say homosexual behavior is not normal, it is not moral, it is not natural, mm -hmm. then that cuts the political and the moral argument out from underneath it does. the gay community in their struggle for same-sex marriage and adoption. Now, we are not political people. No, we're not. But can't, you we're know, not. But the whole thing, one of the things that people don't look at with gay adoptions and, and gay marriages, I mean, when I was in the life, 
I wanted to marry one of my girlfriends and we wanted to have kids together. I mean, there is that natural desire to join with another person in love. We know that from the book of Gen from Genesis where they became one flesh. There's that natural desire that's built into it. There's that natural abil uh, desire for people to have children and to, you know, for the, their, their selves to go forward. Um, so what the homosexual population has experienced is a natural thing, wanting to have children and wanting to get married. But it's skewed because of the fall, because of the sin of Adam and Eve. It's skewed. So what they're wanting is something that they should have. But because of their, because of all of the world having fallen, you know, that, that's what's happening to them. And I, I mean, my, it's almost like they don't have, they don't have hope. You know, my, my heart just goes out to them. I, I don't want it to sound like we're picking on them at all because it's not meant to be. We love them very much. For 30 years, I was apart from any kind of outreach to gay people. I have written, you know, I have written two books. Mm -hmm. uh, I've written two books, one called The Third Sex the third Question sex. Mark, and the other one's called The Gay Theology. And uh, so, you know, these books have been out, and, and so I was a part of that ministry. Uh, in fact, I have to divert a little bit. I, in my doctoral thesis, my dissertation, rather mm -hmm. it's called dissertation, my dissertation was written for these people. It was called A Marriage Manual for Former Homosexuals. Oh, wow. I still have it. I never attempted to get it published. I'd love to read it. But the reason I wrote it is because so many people were coming into our ministry, and they wanted one day to be married. They mm -hmm. wanted that thing you're talking about. And I, all over these years, I've always wanted to enter back into an outreach to people struggling with homosexuality. And I was glad that you came along because it gave me the opportunity to mm -hmm. do this again because I've always had that same sense of a certain sadness. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds patronizing and in a certain way demeaning to people, but I can't help it. I have still had mm -hmm. that, that hope that I would be able to reach out to these people and in a small way we're able to do that. But there is a sadness to be stripped away, separated from some of the normal processes mm -hmm. of life and to be in conflict with yourself and so on. So we have, we have the issues and it all, it all really goes back, <coughs> it all really goes back to um, a, a position where somebody says, no, this is wrong. And in our culture, and I know I'm repeating myself, but there's nothing other than the church today that is able to stand up and say that. Mm -hmm. Nobody has a moral authority or a standing, either a moral or a legal standing, to say that this homosexual behavior is not right. Mm -hmm. and, and that, of course, is under attack. I remember back in the 70s, uh, because of my books, I attended a number of different debates and conferences and investigations and so on and so forth. And I remember over uh, hearing people that were gay organizers deliberately saying we've got to attack the church because they knew that it was only the church mm -hmm. that was able to, to, to make a stand against them. And so by attacking that and you get away from that, then you're able to say homosexuality is normal uh, homosexuality is moral and it must be protected mm -hmm. and all rights, all civil rights. Now I'm for the civil rights of, of everyone. Most definitely. Um, I've never stood in the way or thought against or felt negative about c civil rights for gay people but once you get into gay marriage and get into gay adoption then you're talking about normality and morality yes. here. And that's why Christians will draw a line. Mm -hmm. We're still not being political, but we have a higher authority. Now, uh, that is a little controversy in the South. We are a member of this country, but Christians still have a higher authority than our country. Mm -hmm. We have our God that we owe allegiance to and that we follow. And we, we see that 
homosexual behavior is not normal, it is not moral, mm -hmm. and so we take a stand. Therefore, most biblically oriented Christians will say no to same-sex marriage, say no to gay adoption. I don't get out there and campaign. I'm not political. Right. People don't know how I vote. They don't know if I'm a Democrat or a Republican. I'm not interested in that whole stuff. Mm -hmm. But morally and biblically, I take a stand against that. Exactly. Because that's our authority. That's our authority. The APA, you know, that, they're, not our author they're not our authority. It's that's right. The, it's God. That's our authority. That's right. So here we are. We're engaged in this in this ministry. Charlene, you are, and myself in support thereof. I appreciate your And our, our little church, I was surprised when I took this to our church, and I began to talk about this at Miller Avenue, and um, I didn't exactly, I was pretty sure we have a very mature congregation. Mm -hmm. And I began to uh, talk about it a little bit, and I, I was happily surprised to see that people were very genuinely in support of this ministry. They are, very much so. And um, and so we're once again able to engage in this and to welcome people and to receive people and uh, to struggle with people, to work with people, to, to pray with people, to be in that kind of supportive relationship. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so uh, we're pleased to be able to give you that background, that support. And we know, of course, that there are thousands and thousands of such ministries all over the world yes, now. They are. And that they're growing despite appearances from what you would get from the mainstream media. Despite those appearances, God's Spirit is still reaching out and calling people just like happened to you. Yes, most definitely. Okay. He is doing that. All right, well, that brings us to the end of this. You're going to have some information at the very in the next panel, after the camera goes off here, some contact information for Charlene. And so, we've had these four programs. We are glad that you were able to join us. Hope they have been of some help, support, and encouragement to you. Thank you, Charlene. Thank you, Kent. So long. <laughs>